Ah, uh, Super Mario, one of the most popular characters in gaming history. This iconic Ron Jeremy lookalike has held the starring role in some of the greatest games ever. Whether it be games like Mario All-Stars, Mario World or something more modern like Mario Odyssey, everyone has enjoyed playing as this rotund little hero at one time or another. However, as impressive as many of these classic platformers are, a fair amount of official Mario Bros. platforming adventures have been forgotten and lost to time. Today, we will change that somewhat and visit some of this Italian stallion's most overlooked and frankly ignored capers ever. So, with that said, I am Lady Decade, and these are officially licensed weird Mario games you've probably never played. Regarding Super Mario's early escapades, the first platform you'd probably think of would be the NES. But if you are so old that you are practically dead by this point, you might be able to recall an even earlier period when Mario could have been enjoyed on the Atari VCS. This upload is about obscure Mario games, so we will start this retrospective by looking at a game available on platforms that most Westerners have likely never even heard of. Let's turn our attention to Mario Bros. Special, a game released by Hudson Soft of all publishers in 1984. Created just one year after the success of their first ever Bomberman game, Mario Bros. Special was released on various platforms, including the NEC computer variants that were released exclusively in Japan, as well as the Sharp X1, Hitachi S1 and quite a few others. These games weren't released outside of Japan, so fewer people know about them elsewhere, apart from some geeks. Some geeks claim to know everything. Well, except how to get a prom date, of course. Nintendo has a reputation these days for only allowing gamers to experience Mario on Nintendo consoles. Still surprisingly, despite the fact that the Famicom was released in Japan in 1983, Mario Brothers Special was available to play on other platforms one year later. I guess it must have been the case because these other formats were home computers rather than game consoles like the Famicom. Nintendo must not have considered such media as direct threats to their plans back then, but keeping such thoughts in mind, Mario Bros. Special never surfaced on home computer formats in the West. To give you a little more context, here in Europe, particularly the UK, gaming on microcomputers was big business, with platforms such as the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC 464 being primary methods that many would use for gaming in the 80s. But sadly, no officially licensed Mario games would ever surface on such platforms. Before the success of the British-made classic Donkey Kong Country series, strangely enough, British-made ports of Donkey Kong would surface on this sort of hardware, but Mario games, to excuse the pun, would never make the jump. So why Mario Special never made it to home computer formats popular in Europe remains somewhat of a mystery. But the game's bizarre history aside, what can we experience if we play Mario Brother Special? Well, the game itself isn't a straightforward port of Mario Bros. Arcade, as one may suspect, even though that's certainly how it appears at first glance. Instead, this strange title is certainly based on the arcade classic, but its additional features and significant changes to the graphics and sounds are enough to make it its own thing. Simply put, the whole game was redesigned and made challenging in new ways to encourage players to retain interest while going for as high a score as possible. To make this possible, the game would include four fast-paced stages, each with unique quirks and challenges. Like other games from the era, these four stages repeat and become more and more difficult as you progress. The stages' mechanics change and vary from having to flick switches to needing to dispatch all enemies on the screen to trying to collect all of those dollar dollar bills, y'all, that appear on the screen. To put it frankly, the levels certainly look good enough, however, their ease varies depending on which platforms you're playing them on, with, like other titles from the era, some computer versions performing better than others. The colours and sounds differ greatly from platform to platform too, so it's hard to judge overall how good this game, or should I say games, actually is. One thing is for sure, this marks a strange chapter in Mario history, so I wouldn't expect to see any of these being made available to play on the Nintendo Switch anytime soon. 
So, if you thought those were weird forgotten experiences, how about this one? Punchball Mario is another game released in 1984 by Hudson Soft, but sadly, this game is much more horrible. To describe this as simply as possible, in this scenario, Mario is basically starring in its own low-budget dodgeball movie on uh, low-budget hardware too. And by low-budget hardware, I mean the same platforms that Mario Brothers Special has been released on. Jokes aside, in this odd affair, Mario has his own balls, I mean ball, which he must use to throw at enemies. If contact is made, a successful hit knocks them down briefly, giving Mario a small window of opportunity to strike and obliterate them. Oh yeah, there's a POW box too, just in case there are too many enemies on the screen to deal with simultaneously. We do have one positive though, with this one, which in one category at least elevates it over Mario Brothers Special. On this occasion, unlike in the former game mentioned, Luigi is in this game. This raises the question, shouldn't it have been called a Super Mario Brother special, rather than using a plural in the title? Comment your thoughts below. Nerdily nitpicking aside, there are many recognisable enemies here, such as uh, tortoises, so you will feel right at home if you are a long time fan of this hairy stout tradesman. If you are like most people watching and didn't grow up in Japan or experience this one, it doesn't seem like we are missing out on much. But if we can take one piece of information from learning about this game today, it's that it exists. So now you have some more totally useless information to tell your boring friends on your favourite Discord server. If you want to join my Discord and to talk with me, is linked via the pinned comment. Moving swiftly on, All Night Nippon Super Mario Brothers is another variation only released in Japan. I mean, this makes sense. Who has ever heard of All Night Nippon radio station in the West? However, I am sure it's probably a cult classic amongst weeaboos watching today, just as everything Japanese is. Maybe they enjoy listening to its wavelengths whilst listening to it in bed, whilst relaxing with their waifu body pillow while polishing their samurai sword, if you know what I mean. As for this game, it was released in 1986 and exists as a partially reskinned version of Super Mario Bros. This incredibly rare gaming delight was created for the Famicom Disk System and handed out as a raffle prize on the now legendary All Night Nippon show. In a twist, virtually all of the usual enemies in the game were replaced with the faces of Japanese celebrities and some of the radio station DJs, not that we Westerners would likely recognise any of them. In addition to this oddness, there were other changes implemented too. For example, some levels were entirely changed or replaced with bits from other Mario games, such as the Lost Levels. The main characters, however, do not change, so you're still in control of Mario, beat up Bowser and rescue Princess Toadstool, just like you do in most Mario games. If you'd like to know more about this game, I have covered it in much more detail than this on the channel in the past. I'll link the full video in the description. Next up on this exhilarating jaunt through the most forgotten chapters of this overall wearing warrior's past, we have Super Mario Bros. Special, yet another game developed by Hudson Soft and released in 1986. God, it seems like they were making more Mario games than Bomberman ones back then. As for the time period of the game surfaced, this was a couple of months after the Japanese release of Super Mario Bros. 2, another game that would miss a Western release until it emerged as the Lost Levels in Super Mario Bros. All-Stars. Unlike the previous Mario Bros. special, rather interestingly, this game was released outside of Japan but not in regions where Mario was actually becoming popular. Instead, this one was released on a Samsung computer in South Korea in 1987. This one is really strange, as it looks like an alternative universe version of the Super Mario Bros. NES game that swept America. In fact, when you first look at this game, you wouldn't be blamed for thinking it's a straight port of such a title, but you'd be sorely mistaken. Anyone used to playing this on the NES will instantly see differences and probably find this version much more difficult to play too. I mean, I know relations between Japan and Korea have historically been strained for many years, but no matter what clashes the two countries have been through in the past, did anyone really deserve this? 
jokes and this one's expense aside, there are several substantial gameplay differences that seasoned players will notice right away. The level layouts vary entirely and due to the home computer formats being so different to the NES, the physics behind jumping and dashing are altered too. Which means that your usual tricks that let you whiz through these sorts of games may very well become useless here. Building on the staggering amount of changes, the stage timer has also been reduced in this version too and some items that can be obtained from inside the blocks have also changed. How about this insanity for example? If you find it in the correct box, you can use the hammer from the classic Donkey Kong game on this adventure. This game is deranged. Like a certain other game we've already covered in this content, being called Super Mario Brothers, there is not a Luigi to be seen in sight. Nor are there any warp zones for that matter, so fancy doing your favourite level skip? Well, unfortunately you are out of luck! What makes this all the more amusing is that there are pipes that are usually classed as warp zones in the NES version present in the game, but once you travel through, you can't actually get anywhere else, which means that the timer just ends up killing you instead. Some may consider this a mercy though, so who am I to complain? When it comes to this game, like the other Hudson Mario games we've already covered, the quality of this title depends on which system you're using as to how playable it is. For example, the Sharp X1 plays the game considerably better than any of the NEC systems. The reason for this is that the Sharp version has a little bit more finesse, in that the levels can implement a rolling mechanism which makes transitions from one screen to another much more palatable. In contrast, the NEC version was visually choppy during such transitions. In addition, aesthetics vary hugely when playing from computer to computer. Changes can be seen between the different versions, colour palettes and music varies depending on the hardware. Moving swiftly forward to a different generation of gaming altogether, a video like this wouldn't be right without an obscure Nintendo game for the Satellaview. BS Super Mario Bros. USA is the first Super Mario platform released which used the Satellaview's sound link features, meaning that satellite radio music would be played in conjunction with the game to deliver a unique experience. In this instance, you have an audio drama playing in the background and narrating what's happening. The game is almost the same as Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Doki Doki Fecking Panic, but without various additional features and a completely different story. Some consider this obscure oddity to be the sequel to the original game, however sadly we can't play it anymore in its true form to discover for ourselves fully. I shan't go into too much detail about this one as I've already covered it before, however if you're yet to see my previous upload, the link will be available in my description along with other Satellaview related content I've made in the past. We've already talked about platforming Mario games without Luigi, but what about the platformers without Mario? For those who have ever beaten Super Mario Bros. 3D World or even the Nintendo Switch update, 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, then you would have earned the opportunity to play this game. Luigi Bros. is an unlockable variation of the classic Mario Bros. arcade game, but this time the spotlight is placed on the younger sibling in the Mario family. If that's not enough Luigi for you, then how about Super Luigi Brothers? To experience this strange one, it was part of the now delisted Wii U eShop exclusive known as NES Remix 2. However, fortunately, NES Remix 2 has been preserved in the physical title known as Ultimate NES Remix, so there are still ways you can play this one. Super Luigi Brothers is a simple in premise. The game is pretty much the original Super Mario Brothers game, but with this entirely instead being played in a mirror mode, essentially breathing a new lease of life into the classic game. Luigi controls more or less like how he does in the lost levels, bar the low traction you would have felt when controlling him. Luigi's appearance in this game marked the sixth and the final game in the year of Luigi series. This little piece of Wii U fun is a fantastic easter egg, delivering something unique to retro gamers who grew up playing this gem. To be fair, that doesn't even matter as Atari fans living in old people's homes could enjoy this one too. Huge thank you to everyone who backs this show on Patreon and helps fund the making of these videos. Leave a comment giving your thoughts on these strange games or go one step further and chat with me on my Discord. Ciao for now. Oi. <laughs> Hey, hey.
Hey. Hey.